Okay, so in our first video, we looked at how to set up a simple question. In this video, I, or we looked at the components of a question that was already created. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own new question. And we're also gonna talk about some of the features that our tool provides for handling special inputs that are sometimes needed during validation. Okay, so every question that we create uh, as part of our library needs its own package, right? And so the first thing we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna go here and we'll say something like new package. And then we want this to be in a part of com examples. Um, and we'll say equals 88 or something like that, right? Because that's that actually describes the question we're about to, to write. Um, now, if you have another question that is set up similarly to the one that you want, uh, that you're starting to work on, you can use that one, right? In this case, I'll just uh, create one from scratch so you see the, the, the process uh, from start to finish. So I'm gonna create, um, in this case, this is gonna be another method uh, question. So I'm gonna just add, uh, add a file called question.java. Um, and then what I need to do is I need to use my correct annotation, which I'll need to import. Um, I'm gonna call this equals 88. Um, the version, sorry, I like to do author is me. And the version is 2021.6.0. So this is the first version of the question that I've authored in the month of June, 2021. Okay. Um, oh, and then this is another method question, and so I'm going to use that wrap annotation that we talked about initially to make sure that students don't have to write the class declaration, because that would probably confuse them at this point, because they're still learning how to write methods. Okay. Um, now, this is easy to forget, and it's also easy to get wrong, so let's write the question description first, right? Um, or you can write the, the, the solution first, right? So let's say Boolean equals 88. Uh, we'll say int value, and essentially we're just going to return whether or not the value is equal to 88. 88 is one of my favorite numbers, and so well, 8 is one of my favorite numbers, and the more 8s, the better, right? So we'll just, and actually, why don't we do this? Well, no, I already had equals 88 in the title of the package, right? I was going to add more 8s because that just makes things better, right? All right, so um, now we need a description. So we'll say write a method named equals 88 that returns true if its int argument is equal to 88, our magic number, so, you know. Um, one of the things, you know, writing good uh, problem uh, descriptions is something that takes some practice. Um, one of the things I would encourage you is to just keep it short, simple, straightforward to the point. Um, you know, don't be like, let's, you know, I, 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 I did this myself with some of early problems I started to write. And you know, we write things like let's get some practice writing a new method or something like that. Don't don't write that, right? Just 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 get to the point, right? Um, some of that introductory lead-in text we can provide in other ways. Like we can put it on the page by the question, right? So you don't need to embed it here, right? Um, okay, so uh, we've got our question. Uh, we have the description. We have the name. We have the author. We have the version. I wrote the solution, and we're done, right? Like this this question framework is awesome. I, I literally wrote a question in like two minutes, right? And that's while I was talking to you and, you, and talking to you slowed me down. So, um, all right, so let's let's run our, oh, let me show you something else here. So a lot of times when you're working on uh, your question library, you just wanna focus on one question, right? You don't wanna run validations for everything. Now, as I pointed out previously, the tool is smart enough that it won't revalidate a question once it's already been validated. Um, but sometimes we actually e even would just want to focus even more on one question and make sure nothing else runs. And so there's this additional argument that you can add to correct called focus. And then if you go up here and there's, there's this run configuration called test focused, and this will only try to validate the focused questions. It, and it will always try to revalidate them. Even if they're already been, or even if they have already been validated, it will still try to validate them again. Okay, so we tried this. And in this case, we saw that the validation process failed, okay? Um, and so, so here's, so here's the, the problem that, was, uh, that, 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 that is spit out by the framework, right? And, you know, you know essentially, I, and actually, they're, they're, uh, I may improve this later because there's actually another problem uh, hidden in here as well. But what, what it's warning us about is it says essentially, it provided a bunch of random inputs to this method, but it only ever returned one result, right? It returned false. 
And this hints at something that can cause problems when you start authoring questions, is that this is an example of a question that has a special input, okay? There is a special, there's only one input to equals 88 that causes it to be true. If you pick or an integer at random, every other integer other than 88 will, will result in false. Now here's the thing, the test tool is smart. And maybe it'll get smarter in the future and it'll actually be able to guess this. That's actually something that we could probably do with a little bit of work. But for right now, if you have a special input of some kind, you have to help. Because the thing is, it's like, it does again, it doesn't know that 88 is the special input. So it's just guessing integers, guessing integers. And after a while, it's like, wait, this piece of code only ever returns true. So that's going to be a problem, or false, right? So that's going to be a problem, right? Uh, because, for example, uh, I could solve, it's, it's possible that, you know, I could submit something that just returned false, and it wouldn't know that it was different than the solution. And so essentially, and, and maybe I'm belaboring this point, and you, you're already like, yeah, I get it, right? The idea is that we need to give it a hint. We need to make sure that it knows that there's a special input here um, that causes this to behave a little bit differently. And so this now leads us sort of naturally to this next part of authoring questions using Questioner, uh, this new framework. Um, and this is something that, you know, you have to do for a lot of questions, right? You don't have to write test suites, but you frequently do need to provide test inputs, okay? That's a little bit different, right? So let's see how to do that. Um, there are two phases of testing when we test problems. In the first phase, uh, we try some, uh, we, we try certain inputs that the test tool is hard coded to try for various types of parameter, right? So for integers, we test like negative one, zero, one. We test the max integer value, we test the min integer value, right? These are these fixed inputs, right? The second round, it tries a bunch of random inputs, right? So essentially the second time through, it's gonna try like a bunch of bunch of random inputs and see if it can uh, find something that, uh, that causes things to fail or causes a divergence from the solution. Okay, so again, the problem here is that 88 isn't one of those magic values like 0, 1, or negative 1 that, that, that always get tested during that fixed parameter stage. And it's also not part, it's not something that we're going to find very easily once we just start guessing, right? And so we need to guide the tool in the right direction. The way that we do this is by giving it a hint right, or some hints. And so there are two different annotations we use here. One corresponds to that first part of testing where we're testing fixed values. The second part corresponds to the random part of testing where we're generating random values, okay? So, so let's look at how each works, right? So I'm gonna do fixed, there's this annotation called fixed parameters. This needs to be attached to a private static um, final list of whatever the type is that we want to, uh, that, uh, whatever the type is of that parameter, right? So in this case, the parameter is an int, and the list is going to be a list of integers. Notice that because it's uh, Java, we have to box it, right? So because collections can't include primitive types, it needs to be the boxed integer type. Um, you might also be wondering, what do I do if I have more than one parameter? Yeah, we'll get back there, right? Don't worry. Uh, that, that's coming. Um, Okay, so, and you can choose any name you want for this. I frequently use something like fixed. Um, and, and here, what we'll do is we'll say, I, I usually use the arrays as list sort of uh, convenience method. Um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, write down some inputs here that I wanna make sure are tested, okay? Now, one thing to understand is that this totally takes over that first stage of testing. So we're not gonna try negative one or zero or one anymore. Instead, we're only gonna try the values that you write down as these sort of in the fixed stage of testing. Where we're go the fixed stage of testing goes through a list of inputs that are tried every time, okay? And what I'm saying is I'm saying, okay, well, I wanna try 88, I wanna try 188, you know, make sure they, they read the question properly. Maybe I'll try something with three eights, right? Um, you know, just to make sure that, uh, that they, they, they didn't misread it, right? Um, okay, so now let's try running this again. Uh, I'm just because it's focused and also because it didn't validate the first time, it's gonna run again. Um, and we'll see what, what happens this time. Um, okay, so it's running, it's running. Um, yeah, and so now, so now we have um, now what it's focusing us on is this random parameters method, okay? So the fixed parameters is a list, but it's also warning us, right, 
And right now, this is not a warning that you can work around. So it's really an error that these, the, when I chose a bunch of random parameters, I also didn't find any uh, that produced anything other than false, okay? So now let's talk about that second stage, which is uh, where we use this random parameters annotation. Random parameters, fixed parameters you attach to a list, random parameters gets attached to a method, okay? Um, and again, this should be a private static method, and you can call it whatever you want, right? We'll call it random ints, and the first argument is an instance of Java random, okay? And I'm going to have to import this. Oh, and it, it needs to return, right, it needs to return the type that is expected uh, for the arguments to the function that's under test, right? So the function that we're expecting students to write is called equals 88. So random ints, and it takes a single int as an argument, random ints needs to return an int. Um, now again, when we talk about, uh, when we start talking about and designing methods that take more than one argument, we can, um, I'll show you some examples of how to write those, and, and there's a special um, class that we provide for linking those together. Um, all right, so now I have this random ints method. Now, one thing I want to caution you that's really important here is that usually this method is going to incorporate some randomness. To do that, you have to use the random, um, the instance of random that's passed to the method. The reason for this is that this method gets called multiple times and the tested suite will expect those multiple times to return identical copies. And I don't want to bore you with the details, but if, so essentially if you use your own random number generator that's not passed to this method, that will fail validation for, for other reasons, right? And so now what we're gonna do is we'll just do something simple. We'll say if random next boolean return 88, else return random dot next int. Um, Right? So essentially about half the time, and, and you can do whatever you want here, right? I frequently use random next boolean, right? So about half the time we're going to return this special input 88, and the other half the time we're just going to return a random number, right? So sometimes we're testing a true input, sometimes we're testing a false input. Okay, so now let's run this again, see what happens. So now essentially we've taken over both stages of the testing process. We've taken over that first stage. Um, and we've taken over that second stage. And now you'll see that this will validate, okay? Let's look at the report to get a sense of, of what happened, right? Uh, so again, I'll open this up in IntelliJ. Um, you'll see the description, you'll see what I expect students to provide, and then you'll see all the different mutations that were tested, right? Uh, so for example, I tried mutating the number literal to be 98, I tried mutating it to be 89. I tried changing the equals to a not equals. I just tried, I tried replacing the whole thing with false, right? Both because of uh, false return and also because of remove method. They both, both uh, do something similar in this case. Um, so there you go, right? Um, so, you know, I, I, I performed a bunch of mutations and I was able to reject all those mutations, right? So the idea is that I should be able to uh, correctly test this method at this point. So, you know, a lot of, for most of the methods that you write, I've, I've written like several hundred problems using this tool. Um, most of those problems require providing these annotations, right? There are, there are actually a fair number of questions that we can test completely automatically. But there's a lot of cases in which, you know, the, the whole point of the method is to identify something special about the input, right? Like, let's say you have a string and you're looking for strings that have uh, two identical characters in a row or something like that, right? Well, if I just generate a bunch of random strings, the probability of getting two identical characters in a row is not that high, right? Um, and so I may go through a bunch of random inputs looking for something that, that fails and not ever find anything or looking for something that returns true, returns a certain value, right? Um, and so a lot of times you want to help guide the process. Um, you might wonder sort of like, what's the difference between these two, right? Uh, well, again, this, this one, you write down a fixed set of values that are always going to be tested. And then for the random parameters, what you're doing, obviously, is providing a method that generates new random inputs. Um, so this one gets used at the beginning of testing. And then as we go farther and farther, so one of the things the test suite does is it will continue to test things that it thinks are incorrect, right? So for example, all those mutations, when we test a mutation, we know it's wrong. And so what we do is to figure out kind of how many tests we need to run is we keep testing and we keep testing it until we find a failing import or we give up because it took too long. 
At some point, once you run out of the fixed parameters, the test suite starts to call your random parameters method to generate inputs, right? It'll call this over and over and over again, right? And so, you know, uh, another way to think about this is frequently the, rant, the fixed parameters, I'll show you some examples of this, right? The fixed parameters may, can also be based on examples that you provide to students, right? So this is a really simple problem, but for some problems it's useful as part of the problem description to provide some pairs of inputs and outputs, right? Um, and if you do that, you want to make sure that those inputs are in your fixed parameters to make sure they always get tested, right? That way, you know, if students make a certain type of mistake that one of your fixed inputs will identify, they get a nice error message. And the error message sort of, you know, like harkens back or, or points back at the description. There's a nice sort of synergy between those two there. So that can be helpful as well. So I'd argue, I mean, this is actually probably the most common format for a question in questioner, right? I would encourage you when you are setting up a problem, set it up first, don't provide either of these annotations and see if it works. If it does work, you're done, right? Sometimes even if it does work, you still wanna provide these just to make things a little bit stronger, um, but sometimes you don't have to, right? For a lot of certain types of inputs and certain types of problems, the random inputs that are generated automatically by um, the testing tool are completely okay uh, and, and will work out just fine. Okay, so, so in this example, what we did is we set up a new problem um, and we looked at an example of a problem where the, you know, setting up the problem actually required that we guide the testing process a little bit towards inputs that cause the, the solution even to behave differently, right? If I just pick a bunch of random integers, I feel like this solution might as well just be returned false, but there is this magic number that I need to provide that, that is sort of you know, involved in, in this and in the middle of all of this, right? Um, and so if I can tell the testing suite to make sure that it uses that number, then things are gonna work out pretty well. Okay, so um, I think what we'll do next is we'll talk about how to set up a problem that uses multiple inputs, and then also maybe a, a problem that has a little bit more complexity to it in terms of how we generate inputs, right? So we can talk a little bit about that, that random parameter method. Um, and maybe also something that like uses strings or some sort of slightly more interesting data type than, than we've done so far.